man uh, to Christopher Whitman. He was seriously injured in the West Bank on Friday when he was shot by a high-velocity tear gas canister fired by Israeli forces. He's a master's student at the Hebrew University in Islamic and Middle East studies. Welcome, uh, Christopher. Talk about what happened to you, what the protest was about on Friday. Sure. Every Friday in the village of Nabi Saleh, in the occupied Palestinian territories north of Ramallah, there's a peaceful demonstration against uh, illegal land confiscation of the village's land. Uh, recently, uh, there have been very violent, uh, the Israeli reaction has been very violent. And I had been this past week, I had been a couple of times before previously, but this past week was even an even bigger reaction than normal. For the first three hours, uh, it was mostly children between the ages of 10 and 12 who were singing nationalist songs, who were jumping up and down, dancing, trying to access their village's land. After about three hours of this, the Israelis overreacted, started beating the older residents of the village, started throwing tear gas canisters and uh, stun grenades at the children, and then uh, started beating uh, women who were wearing hijab, started spraying pepper spray in their eyes. This is when I started to back up, and I was about 15 meters away, from the border police at this time, and he shot a tear gas canister directly at my head. As you can see, I have a bandage on my head. I was shot at close range with a high-velocity metal tear gas canister. Um, but this, this protest goes on every week, and every week there are mass, there's a mass amount of injuries. The village only has about 500 people, yet every week there are almost 30 injured. So we're talking about 8% of the village every week is injured, engaging in nonviolent protests. We're mostly children. We're mostly talking about people that are under the age of 12 and over the age of 55 who are just asking and protesting for their rights to not have their land taken away to expand Jewish settlements in the occupied territories. Explain exactly what happened when you were hit with a tear gas canister. Um, when Tristan Anderson, who was photographing an American press, uh, uh, an American uh, freelance photographer activist from Northern California was hit, he was critically wounded. Um, it, where was the canister from? Uh, did you see the person who shot you, Christopher? Uh, when I was shot, I did not see the exact person who shot it. I, there was a tear gas canister that was shot seconds before that was right over my head. That's why I decided just to duck just a little bit. But uh, when I, after I got out of the hospital, when I got home, I checked my video, and when you freeze frame, you can actually see which shoulder, uh, soldier shot me. It's actually border police that shot me, not soldiers. I just want to clarify that. It was a border policeman who shot me, and you can see the exact distance and the aiming of the can of his rifle. It's supposed to, you're supposed to, when you're in the border police and the IDF, you're supposed to be aiming up. He aimed directly, and you can see how he aimed directly at me, and when it hit me, it hit me right here. It tore off a part of my scalp about this big. And then two Palestinians picked me up and brought me to the ambulance. And do you know where the tear gas canister was from? I have no idea. Uh, no. I, I mean, I know I've seen this canister a million times. This, it has Hebrew written on it. Uh, I've never seen the words America in Hebrew on it. And I, I, can, I know enough Hebrew to be able to read America, and that, that is not on there. So. And the effect of the tear gas? Uh, the effect of the tear gas is different from place to place. In certain villages, such as uh, Belain or Nalain or Nabi Saleh, they have a certain kind of canister. Uh, it's a metal canister or a rubber ball, which is about this big, looks like a grenade. It's a certain it's a certain potency. It's much higher than tear gas they use in, say, East Jerusalem or uh, protests in many other places. It's a higher potency. It's, I mean, even if you only get a little bit of it, your eye, every, every pore in your face, it starts to just absolutely let out any fluid that's in there. Uh, you have to run inside of a house, you have to get away from it, you can't rub it, you can't touch it, you just have to let fresh air get to it. And it's very different, depending on where you are. Uh, can you talk about the response um, in the area to the resignation of George Mitchell? Sure. Uh, there, uh, as people might know, in the Palestinian camp, there, in Palestinian society, there are two different uh, sectors of how to deal with the Israel-Palestine conflict. You have the people who are closer to Fatah, uh, the main ruling party, and they generally are for a two-state solution. When they view, uh, the res they view the resignation of George Mitchell essentially as the last straw uh, for the chance of a two-state solution, they view George Mitchell as basically the best of the worst. They don't view the Americans generally as being honest negotiators, but they view George Mitchell essentially as the only person who can make Israel concede anything, given his 
uh, track record in peace negotiations, given his ability to see things through a clearer image than general U.S. administrations do. So to see his resignation is kind of a symbol of the collapse of the peace process, even more so than in, uh, in the past 15 years.